Welcome back. In a 165-page report, Attorney General Letitia James has concluded that Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women in violation of state and federal law. What is next? Lawyers representing the women and a growing number of New York state legislators all agree that Governor Cuomo must resign. One of those state legislators joins us here today. Welcome, Assembly Member of Assembly District 85, Kenny Burgos. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on, Sanji. Of course. So, Assembly Member Burgos, um, you join a growing list of legislators calling for Governor Cuomo's resignation. What were your thoughts as soon as the AG's report came out? The report was damning. Um, to be quite honest, I don't even think I believe that it would be as damning as it was. Uh, but the Attorney General said unequivocally that the governor sexually assaulted, assaulted multiple women of his staff and of his team and committed crimes, uh, federal and state. And now, between now and the time that this show airs, many things may change, but what would it mean if the governor resigned today? What would happen next, and, and who would take his place as governor? Well, if the governor resigns today, the lieutenant governor, Kathy Hochul, would immediately assume the position of governor of New York and finish out his term. Thank you for that. Um, and Governor Cuomo, of course, continues to deny any wrongdoings even after the report was released, um, and even released his own attorney's uh, report. What would happen if he doesn't resign? Well, if the governor doesn't resign, um, the assembly has the constitutional power in New York to move forward impeachment proceedings. Now that's gonna be up to the assembly majority uh, of, of Democratic Assembly members and also the speaker. Uh, we're in conversations now to see how we're, we're deciding to move forward. We do have our own investigation separate and apart from the attorney general. Uh, so right now it's still an ongoing conversation. Right. I definitely wanted to ask about that, um, that investigation by the Assembly. I know that back in March, the New York State Assembly and Assembly Speaker Carl Hiesti announced a plan to launch an investigation that could pave the way for a possible impeachment no, of, of Mr. Cuomo. Can you tell us a little bit more about this investigation? I know you said that it's in talks, but um, what, you know, what were the, were the procedures back in March and up till now? So our investigation, investigation is still ongoing. It's being handled by the Assembly's Judiciary Committee. Uh, but our investigation is a bit broader, whereas the attorney general's investigation was into the sexual misconduct and sexual harassment in the office. Our investigation um, expands upon that with also the $5 million the governor made from his book deal with the COVID-19 scandal with the nursing home data um, and also some information on the Mario M. Cuomo bridge uh, in, uh, in regards to its integrity, the bridge's integrity. Got it. Thank you for that, um, Assembly Member. Um, the Attorney General also added that they found Cuomo and his senior staff retaliated against at least one accuser who was a former employee as well. Is there a concern that the governor can use his power, influence, and intimidation to get out of this case entirely, too? That's always been a concern, unfortunately. Um, it's, you know, it's something we've seen in the past. It's something that uh, is pretty much well known in the political sphere. Um, I don't believe at this moment there is much retaliation he can do. As you know, the report is concluded. We have data. We have information. We have eyewitness reports. We have emails. There's so much information now at, at our disposal. Um, I'm not really sure if any retaliation efforts would would even benefit him. Assembly member, I wanted to bring up your tweet um, from the day of when the report was released, of course. So you mentioned that these actions have no place in politics or anywhere else. And you reiterated, of course, your call for the governor's resignation. Just tell me a little bit more about, you know, how this is also a violation of state and federal law. Um, obviously, it's it would be illegal then, no? Yeah, it's a crime. I mean, at the end of the day, sexual harassment and sexual misconduct is something that the New York State Legislature has put at the forefront uh, uh, on, you know, on, on things we want to change in Albany and for New York State. But it's also a federal crime, and it has been for a long time. Uh, and these are the words from the Attorney General, not myself. Uh, so the fact that she's concluded that with her investigators, with her team of lawyers, um, I, I think it's clean and clear to know that he has committed a crime and is no longer fit for office. In your opinion, what does this all mean for women in general and the state of politics in New York City, not, o not only for politicians, but for the people of New York City as well? It's difficult, you know, I, my heart goes out and I sympathize with women who have, you know, experienced this sort of abuse, women who work in these abusive spaces. Um, it, it creates a very, very complicated work environment, unfortunately, but this is why we have to call these things out. This is why we have to kind of dismantle this kind of culture and create a much more, you know, comforting and, and, and open and inclusive space for everyone. And how exactly can we do that moving forward? You know, how should people in power positions like the governor do better? And, you know, what can what can happen next? Well, one, we can start by, you know, not committing these egregious acts. Uh, you know, we do have 
sexual harassment trainings that are mandated by state law. I take them, my staff takes them, and everyone in New York State takes them. Um, so we can start with, you know, increasing uh, those those trainings, uh, maybe increasing how often we take them. Um, but also, again, it comes down to calling it out when it happens. So even someone as powerful as the governor of New York, by handling a situation like this, this just sends a message to everyone that this will not be tolerated. This is not acceptable in the workplace and not acceptable anywhere, frankly. Right. Assembly Member um, Burgos, I also know that the uh, President Biden also joins the calls out for resignation of, of Governor Cuomo and, and so do a few other people as well, um, including Nancy Pelosi. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me just about, you know, what, what power does the president have in, in terms of removing a governor out of office when something like this happens? Well, uh, the governor, I mean, sorry, the president actually has absolutely no power in, ter in terms of official power for removing the governor from office, um, to my knowledge. Uh, but the governor, the president of the United States is the, you know, the, the leader of our party, the leader of the Democratic Party. And I think him speaking out sends a big message, you know, that even whether, whether you're in a Democratic Party, uh, same party as us, we will not tolerate this sort of sexual harassment. Uh, so the, the president speaking out on this, I think, sends a huge message. Uh, but as far as official power, the official power lies within the assembly right now. And if that investigation by the assembly does go through and, you know, if people look into it and, and the governor, you know, takes that into the governor's office, takes that into account. Is there, um, you know, any way that he can also get out of that as well? Can he just say deny allegations again and, you know, stay in his seat as governor? So impeachment proceedings in New York are a bit different than we're used to on the federal level, whereas, you know, Donald Trump was impeached twice, but continued to be our president until the end of his term. Uh, if we were to file impeachment proceedings in the state of New York with the assembly, uh, the governor would immediately no longer be the sitting governor of New York. It would be Kathy Hochul, uh, but then he would go to trial. So this would be, uh, you know, a normal criminal trial that we're used to seeing on TV or or any sort of entertainment. But this, it's not entertainment. This is an actual trial. And if the governor's, you know, uh, had, with his team of lawyers and our lawyers somehow uh, is found not guilty, then he'd be found not guilty. If he's found guilty, then he is. Uh, but this does this essentially just removes him from office immediately as an impeachment trial. Right. And before we go, Assembly Member Burgos, just a you know a message to Bronxites as well. Um, during these times, you know, there's so much turmoil when it comes to politics, and there's so much going on. Uh, what can you tell uh, tell Bronxites at this time? What I'll tell Bronxites is, you know, I know it can be difficult to try to digest news that comes day in and day out, and this can feel political or not, but you know. This is not political. This is really just speaking out against sexual harassment. This is about speaking against violence in the workplace, um, you know, power plays. And that's we really want to fix that kind of culture um, and, and take it take it as such. So I ask Bronxites to look at this thoroughly, you know, take a look at the report and, and really check out the details of the story. Um, because unfortunately, this is, you know, us calling out sexual harassment in the workplace. And this kind of behavior is unacceptable in New York. Right. I think it's very important to note that, you know, this is public information. It's available online for everyone to read and take a look at for themselves. Um, so thank you for bringing that up, Assemblymember Burgos. Um, since we have you here, I want to take advantage and talk a little bit about the vaccination mandates that recently came out as well. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what this means for New Yorkers and people who are not vaccinated? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we have people, a, gr a group of people who have been very hesitant to get the vaccine for one reason or another. And, um, I've been doing my best, you know, to speak with people and, you know, try to address their concerns. I know there are many concerns, uh, but unfortunately, I think we're going to be moving to a space where we're going to have a lot more mandates, whether from the private sector or like we've seen from you know, city employees and state employees. And I think, unfortunately, we'll reach a point where it will be very difficult to kind of live your life in New York State or New York City without having a vaccine. You know, I urge to New Yorkers and Bronxite that this really is for the benefit of everyone. This is to for us to truly, truly end this COVID pandemic. Otherwise, we will live with a mass season. We will live with COVID on a year-to-year -year basis. Uh, and we have the power and technology and the science and ability to remove it. Uh, this really just comes down to the will of the people. Um, one more thing. What does this all mean for the budget, you know, coming up? Um, is this going to halt it? You know, the fact that, that the governor is currently in this, in this situation. Um, what's going to happen with that? The state budget? Yes. Well, the state budget was passed uh, a few months ago, so I mean, we're not even in legislative session, uh, so it shouldn't halt or really affect our state budget for the next year in, in any way, so long as this isn't dragged out, and I don't, I don't expect it to, uh, so it shouldn't have any implications. 
Thank you for breaking that down. And before we go, Assembly Member Burgos, just um, you know, how people can stay in touch with you in your office and get in contact with you if they need anything at this time. Yeah. So all my social media handles are at Kenny Burgos NY. So that's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And my email is burgosk at nyassembly.gov. So happy to help, happy to direct people to, you know, whatever resources they need. Uh, if I can be helpful directly, I'm ha happy to do so as well. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for speaking to us about this very important um, you know, topic today. Thank you so much. We'll be right back here on Open BXRX Tuesday.